and those men came to the house, they did not knock on the door and said, uh, Preacher Mose, we want to see somebody. Uh, no, they banged on the door and told him to open up. And uh, they were very noisy. They were very mean. They were very hostile. And they had their flashlight lights. They had a shotgun. And uh, they also had these big 45s. I mean, they, they were well armed. And when they got inside the house, they went from room to room. Now, how they, we don't know how they knew where to go looking for anybody. Somebody had to tell them that there were some Chicago boys staying with Preacher Moe's. We don't know yet who gave that information. But when they got to the room where my son and uh, Moses Wright's baby son, where they were sleeping, they would ask every boy as they encountered them, oh, are you the one that went in the store? Something like that. And Emmett, uh, acknowledged that he had been in the store. and But he said yes, and oh, that's when the violence really erupted because he had the nerve to just give a plain yes. And uh, they gave him a lesson in Southern English. Uh, you say yes, sir, and no, sir, and uh, or either... I mean, you put a handle on their name. You, you, you didn't, uh, uh, on your answers, you didn't just give a yes or a no. And they began to swear, and they cursed at him, and they told him to get his clothes on. And uh, Emmett began by putting his socks on, and they wanted to know, what are you doing now? He said, well, I always put my socks on before I put my shoes on. And uh, Big Milam told him, where you're going, you're not gonna need shoes or socks. And, uh, which was certainly a threat. Yeah, well, they took him from the house. They drove him to another half-brother's farm, a barn in uh, Glendora, Mississippi. And as God would have it, there was another black youngster on his way to his grandmother's friend's house to get a cup of sugar, a cup of flour, a cup of something. And uh, she told him to go to the pump and uh, find out who they were beating in the barn. She could hear the screams. She could actually hear the blows. But uh, so he went to the pump, but he had the nerve, and God knows we haven't worked this out yet. What made him so nervy until he went to the barn and he peeked through the cracks in the barn structure, and he saw what they were doing in there, and they never observed him. When they took uh, I think it was Big Milam who took the hatchet and came down over Bo's head and separated the facial part from the back part. And uh, then he had the nerve to take his gun and shoot him through the temple area. And I know he was dead by then. I, I, I know he was. Uh, even before he took the axe, the, the hatchet, I'm sure he had died from the severe beating they had given him. And all of their beating was concentrated around the head. The rest of his body was literally unscarred. But they did a workout on his head. Have you seen the Jet magazine?
photo you have. Well, if you notice that photo, you will see where you can see where the undertaker sewed him back together. Yeah, but you have to know that he was separated to know uh, to really uh, assess the significance of those stitches. They had dug the left eye out. It looked as if they'd taken a nut picker and picked the left eye out. The right eye was about midway his cheek. His uh, nose looked like they had taken a meat chopper and just chopped along the bridge of the nose. Where they tied that gin fan around his neck with the barbed wire. The weight of it had choked his tongue out. And uh, when the body was discovered, the sheriff immediately sent for Moses Wright. He knew who they had found. And uh, Moses Wright was only able to identify Emmett by the ring on his finger. Uh, the L.T., Lewis Till, that was his dad. 